So today I want to talk about this really fascinating sum, which is actually going to be really complicated to compute, but it's going to use really interesting techniques. A big one being how to change a sum into an integral. So the sum we're interested in is the sum n equals 0 to infinity of the quantity negative 1 all to the n times this entire sum here all squared. So the first thing I want to do is take apart this sum that we have and look at it in a different light by thinking about how to change it into an integral of some kind. Okay, so you notice that the denominator is n plus k. And if we actually multiply that by xn times xn x to the k, then it looks like it's the evaluation of that from 0 to 1. Okay, so what we'll do is consider then the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n over 1 plus x dx. That's the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n times a sum that's going to involve terms that look like negative 1 to the k minus 1 times x to the k. It's the sum k equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the k, x to the k. Now doing that, um, x to the k minus 1, x to the k minus 1. And that is the expansion of 1 over 1 plus x is a series. Um, so we can do this. We have to be careful and think about uh, conversions of the integral with the sum in order to interchange the sum and the integral, but it works out in this case. So if we do the interchange, this will be the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k minus 1 times the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n plus k minus 1 dx. And that integral is precisely, when evaluated from 0 to 1, 1 over 1 plus k, because we get the integrals 1 over 1 plus n plus k to x to the n plus k evaluated from 0 to 1. Okay, so this does work out to be the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k plus 1 times 1 and 1 over 1 n plus k, which is exactly the thing inside of the sum that we have that's being squared in our original expression. So we can express that sum as an integral. That's our first key step here. And the idea, again, was using Taylor series to do that. So the sum we're interested in is actually the sum n equals 0 to infinity of the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n over 1 plus x dx all squared. Now we have a square of an integral and we have to multiply by negative one to the n, so we should be careful there. Now we have a square of an integral, so we can actually write that as the product of two integrals then, and we'll use different variables for those integrals. We have the sum n equals zero to infinity, negative one to the n, times the integral from zero to one of x to the n over one plus x dx, and then we'll write the other copy of it in terms of the variable y. Okay, now if we do that, given that the functions involved are independent of, or dependent only on their individual variables, we can actually now re-express this as a double integral. We get the sum n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, of the double integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n, y to the n, all over the quantity 1 plus x, 1 plus y, dy dx. Cool. Now again we're going to use our series to make things a little bit simpler here. We notice that as we're summing we have this negative 1 to the n um, and we're going from 0 to infinity times x to the n y to the n. Now the sum all together there is going to be 1 over 1 plus xy. So we can even combine all of this together. Again, we should be careful of convergence when we're inter interchanging the sum and the integral. Um, it works out in this case. And we're left with the double integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over the quantity 1 plus xy times 1 plus x times 1 plus y dy dx. So this is fascinating. We've turned this double sum that we started off with into a problem that's completely in terms of integration. And so what we're left with is dealing with this integral. Now, this double integral is not easy to compute. It's going to take a lot of steps. But the key thing is we've somehow changed this wild double sum into a double integral, which is really, really cool. Okay, so to start, what we're going to do is take everything that's dependent only on x out. So we get the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 plus x times the integral from 0 to 1 
of one, uh, one over one plus y times one plus xy dy dx. And we'll figure out that dy integral first. So this kind of looks amenable to something like a partial fractions. Imagine x was, an, it, with respect to y, x is a constant. So imagine it actually was treated as such. We'd have the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over 1 plus y times 1 plus xy dy. If x was like the number 2, then we'd do a partial fractions and figure out sort of um, how to write this in terms of 1 over 1 plus y and 1 over 1 plus xy. Okay, so it'll turn out to be something like this. So um, if we want to write this it, with fractions where we have 1 plus y in the denominator of one of them and 1 plus xy in the denominator of the other, we can have a 1 and an x. If we simplify that, we get 1 plus xy minus x times the quantity 1 plus y. And so we'd have an extra factor of 1 minus x here. So we're going to pull that out a little bit later. If we actually do the integration, we get ln of 1 plus y minus now x over 1 plus xy has an integral of ln of 1 plus xy. So when we differentiate, we get the extra factor of x as a constant with respect to the variable y. Um, and again, we're going to be evaluating this from 0 to 1, but remembering that we actually have an extra factor in the integral of 1 over uh, 1 minus x. Right? And the reason is because when we actually do the simplification of the fraction in the parentheses, we'll get an extra factor of 1 minus x in the numerator. So we'll get the evaluation of this expression involving the logarithms from 0 to 1, but multiplied by 1 over 1 minus x, which is this constant with respect to the variable y itself. Okay, so if we evaluate these expressions at 0, we'll get ln of 1 minus ln of 1, so that disappears. So all that matters is the evaluation at 1, which gives us ln of 2 minus ln of 1 plus x. So our final integral is this expression right over here. Okay, now we can rewrite this as one expression by uh, subtracting the logarithms, which is the same as dividing the arguments. We'll take the negative out and we get negative the quantity ln of 1 plus x all over 2, all divided by 1 minus x. Okay, so that is the expression for our y integral. And so what we're left with is that this double sum can be expressed as one integral in terms of the variable x itself. And where, what remains is to compute that integral. And that integral is not going to be easy to compute, I'll admit. But at least we have it there at our disposal to figure out. So the integral we're left with is the integral from 0 to 1 of negative ln of 1 plus x all over 2 times the quantity 1 plus x times the quantity 1 minus x all in the denominator dx. So that's the thing we want to integrate. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually try to do this. Our strategy is going to be to split this up so that the denominator doesn't have two polynomials in it. It just has uh, a 1 plus x in one of the denominators and a 1 minus x in the other. Uh, I'm not going to do the partial fractions decomposition for this. I'll just tell you what the result is because we've sort of seen a partial fractions already. Um, so you'll end up with something like this, negative half the integral from 0 to 1 of ln of 1 plus x over 2 all over 1 plus x dx, and then a similar thing with the same constant negative a half with 1 minus x on the denominator instead. So we'll take these two different integrals and try to actually compute them individually. And our double sum is going to be the result of computing these two integrals. Okay, let's start with the first one because in the ln argument, we have a 1 plus x already and we have a 1 plus x in the denominator. So this means, seems amenable to like a nice substitution. Okay, so we'll write down that integral again just to have it there. Um, and ln of 1 plus x over 2 all over 1 plus x and we're looking at this dx. So the natural substitution is either something like a 1 plus x or a 1 plus x over 2 depending on what you like. So we'll choose... Um, 1 plus x over all over 2 to be our u. Okay, um, if we do that, then du is a half dx. And then doing the substitution, we get negative a half. The integral from now uh, a half is our bottom point, and 1 is our top point. 
Um, and then we have um, ln of u all over, uh, the denominator now is 2u, uh, and then dx is 2du. So there's sort of like a lot of twos flying around. We just have to be careful with these, these two values. Um, okay, and so this leaves us with a negative a half times uh, the integral of ln of u over u, um, which is itself ln squared of u. Um, so we get a half ln squared of u evaluated from a half to one. Okay, so the integral is actually a half of ln squared of u. Um, okay, so we get the negative half and a little bit tedious, but let's compute. At one, we get zero, and then at a half, we get negative, uh, because we're subtracting, a half ln squared of a half. Now, ln squared of a half is the same as ln squared of two. It'd be nicer to just use two instead. Um, the reason being that ln of a half is the negative of ln of two, um, and we're squaring this. So the result then at the end is gonna work out to a quarter times ln squared of two. Okay, so the double sum we're interested in, in then is one fourth ln squared of two plus this underlined integral right here. So that's the integral that remains to compute and then we'll be done and have finally what this sum is. Okay, um, so we made a substitution here um, that interchanged what the integral we have was and the Substitution was something that was kind of a little bit clever. I'm gonna leave you to figure out what it was. Um, so this substitution, with the substitution, we'll break up the integral into two pieces. The integral zero to a half ln of one minus u over u du, two copies of that. And so the thing that we're interested in, star, is a fourth of this thing that we just wrote down. If you want, leave in the comments what you think the substitution is that we got to get this integral for star from what we had previously. Now the second integral, we're gonna interchange u and one minus u. So like substitute um, a variable like t for one minus u. We'll get the integral, negative of the integral from zero to half of ln of one minus u over u du. And then here, if we do that substitution, I'm gonna save sort of the, the, the details of what the substitution is like. We'll get the integral from one to a half of ln of u all divided by one minus u du. Okay, so the interesting part is gonna be how to compute the second integral that's involved. What we're gonna do to compute this second part of the integral is actually use Taylor series at our disposal after having integrated by parts. So we're gonna let f be the numerator and g prime be one over one minus u. So if we do that, our integral will become the thing that we had before, right? And then plus the product of f and g, the integral of one over one minus u is ln of one minus u times negative one. So we get negative ln of one minus u ln of u evaluated from one to a half. And <clears throat> And we have to be careful what happens with one um, because ln of one minus one is ln of zero, which doesn't make sense. So we'll approach one, let's so actually say one from the right. Um, and then we'll have the integral from one to a half of the following expression, du, ln of one minus u over u du um, using the integration by parts. Okay, so this is a lot, right? But we can now use what we did by parts to combine with that original negative integral. So first, let's do the evaluation um, of that one piece. When you approach it from one, I'll tell you that the, the, the it ends up being zero. As so we get negative ln, squared of a half um, when we evaluate at a half. And then combining the two underlying integrals, we get the negative integral from zero to one ln of one minus u over u du. 
Okay, and again, ln of a half is the same as ln of two, which we'll write in a bit, but we'll save it now as the integral, negative of the integral, negative ln squared of a half plus the integral from zero to one of, now we'll do a substitution of the power series for ln of one minus u. We get u over, plus u squared over two, plus u cubed over three, et cetera, all over u du, and we'll do our integral that way. Now the thing is, you have to be very careful about convergence issues here. That integral is very much an improper integral. The denominator can't be evaluated at zero. The numerator can't be evaluated at one, but we'll skip that for the, 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 the sake of going on, but do check it. Now, if we divide by the denominator, we get as our integrand one plus u over two plus u squared over three plus u cubed over four, et cetera. Okay, um, so now we wanna integrate that expression and evaluate from zero to one still having that negative ln squared of a half left. So this is quite an intense approach. I mean, we use the double integral idea, and then now we're skipping and going to power series. And again, I want you to be careful about the power series substitution in terms of convergence. We're gonna omit those details here. Um, okay, so now we'll do the integration. We got one, plus one over two squared, plus one over three squared, plus one over four squared, et cetera, because a term like say u squared over three, when we integrate it, we get u cubed over three, but then we have a three already in the denominator. And that sum, the sum of the squares of reciprocals of integers, is known in mathematics to actually be pi squared over six. So this entire mess is a fourth of all that we have written right over here. So the star is a fourth of this thing, which then is negative one fourth of ln squared of two, because ln squared of a half is the same as ln squared of two, plus pi squared now over 24. So when we add it to what we had as our double sum, we get one fourth ln squared two minus one fourth ln squared two, plus pi squared over 24. So you get a final result of pi squared over 24.